makes a home. Each of us longs for a place to belong, a connection that gives roots to our wandering lives. Our hearts hunger for a community where we are intimate members, a sense of belonging to people who love us. Our souls crave a purpose bigger than our jobs, a connection to a sense of meaning. We yearn to know that our own stories have significance in the grander scheme of God's mega story. All of these may be found in home, a place to belong, a people to be a part of, and a purpose where God's righteousness and design are celebrated and cherished in community every day. That is not to say the home or the people in it have to fit a certain mold or look a particular way. Whether single or married, parent or childless, student missionary working away from home, traveling as a way of life or in between places while being transferred. Everyone, anyone can make home amidst the ever-changing circumstances of life, but it won't just happen by accident. Homemaking, not in the sense of housekeeping, but in the broader sense of cultivating the life of a home has to be done on purpose. The essence of home you see is not necessarily a structure. What makes a home is the life shared there, whatever that may be. And cultivating the life of home requires intentionality, planning, and design. There must be someone or several someones to craft the life, the beauty, the love, and the inspiration that overflows from that place. That is a part of page eight from the book, The Life-Giving Home, that was written by Sally and Sarah Clarkson. If you have not joined our Ladies of Grace free community that's right here on YouTube in the community tab, make sure that you join because this month we are reading this book, going over it, and we will be having a live the end of the month. What I want to talk to you about a little bit is the home nor the people in it have to fit a certain mold or look a particular way that means you have freedom you have flexibility in your home in your life in your home school to bring whatever flavors you have to offer to the table there are certain things that i personally like i love an eclectic look <laughs> there would never be a way to just boil me down to one i absolutely love the coastal color scheme of a house my house is predominantly blue throughout the entire thing but i also love a beautiful farmhouse you know i'm a country girl and i grew up in the country so i like farmhouse I like country living style homes but I'm also striving to have less things so that I can have the time to not focus on the things but the time to make more memories so I love the minimal look as well and honestly, when it's just all said and done, <laughs> I like all the styles and I find that there is something amazing from each style and flavor that is offered. And what I want to say to you is, personally, I was beyond excited 
to leave my townhouse where my neighbors were literally three feet away, (laughs) four feet away, even if it was five, to come live on six acres. That brought me so much joy. But maybe you don't want to live on six acres. Maybe you don't want to live on land at all. And maybe you want to live in a townhouse because you love the coziness of having lots of neighbors surrounding you bring. That's okay. Maybe you don't actually have a townhouse yet. And maybe you live in an apartment or a condo. And that's okay too. Maybe you rent a room out. Maybe you have a manufactured home, a single wide, a double wide. Maybe you have an RV or maybe you have a camper. There are so many options. I have seen the most breathtaking Airbnbs that are made out of shipping containers. Oh. What a treasure. And the best part is the host is another flower farmer like me. So I definitely hope to get away there. And maybe for my 13th year anniversary. Hint, hint. (laughs) In any event, the point that I'm making is it doesn't have to be an all or nothing and I don't take an all or nothing approach in my home style nor in my life and so I don't want you to feel like because you don't have a certain housing or certain land um, or because you don't can all your food or grow all your own food or preserve all your own food because you don't eat all organic because you don't eat all natural because you are vegan or vegetarian like listen this is the time for us to just be okay with where we are we don't have to fit into the mold in fact we're mold makers okay we make molds (laughs) And so I just say this, just, it it may be random. It may be like, Christy, okay, girl. But I just know for me, there's been so many times where I didn't fit here or there, or maybe I fit with this part, but not that part. And I just want you to know that it's okay. As long as you're doing your best to be the best that you can be in every area of your life, I think that's perfect. And although I do grow some of my food and although I do love natural and organic things, the reality is sometimes I do use a can and although not often, occasionally I go through like a fast food restaurant. It might be twice a year, but that's not the point. The point is that I do it. And so I just want to share that if you're feeling bad because you've served your kids takeout or because you've served your children macaroni and cheese (laughs) for the 50 million time I just want to let you know that they probably love that macaroni and cheese that mama so graciously provided for them when mama knows that's their favorite and they're probably not thinking like oh mom's such a failure she gave me this box macaroni and cheese so I just think that it's so important to be mindful of how we view things and how we view um, our homes our jobs as moms homemakers homekeepers homeschool teachers I'm not really sure what your capacity is and some of you may be watching and you don't homeschool you don't homestead you know you're not fully homekeeping yet but you just want the encouragement and you just want to see what it looks like and that's okay too I just want you to know that families and homes come in all different types of shapes and sizes and makeups but the most important thing are the memories that are shared there it's the love it's the forgiveness it's the coming together I'm telling you, it's cultivating every inch of the home. It's just finding and reflecting beauty and order and goodness and just really directing our attention 
to being conscious, conscious that we are meeting the needs of our families, conscious that we are showing love and respect, that we are nurturing our children and our families in the way that they need it, that we're celebrating and that we are making our homes Feel like a beautiful, welcoming, loving place to be. A place that they can pull away from the stress, escape the demands, rest, cry, dream, have a sanctuary, and just know that they're safe, they're comfortable, and they are loved. Well, that is pretty much it for this video. I am never out of words but I always find myself out of time <laughs> come back so that you can see the new videos that I make I post three times a week and until the next time blessings if you haven't already make sure you subscribe